now that my sheet is trimmed square, I'm going to use the Sharpie marker to mark off a grid so that we can start to make the layout lines that we need to cut this cube pattern. If I look at the cube pattern, I can see that it's one, two, three, four squares high and three squares wide. And if I measure those squares, I know that the squares are four inches wide. That's the size of the material that I have, so I'm going to make a four inch cube. I'm using a Sharpie marker so that you can see what I'm doing, but I recommend that you use a pencil when you actually do this layout because it's easier to erase a pencil mark uh, and Sharpie markers don't really go away. So the basic tactic here is the same that we used when we made our, our demonstration lines on the other side of the page, where I have my ruler. I know that my total length of this line is 12 inches. I'm going to put the 12 inch mark on the far right side of the page because that's my square corner and I'm going to mark a four inch interval which means I don't need to mark this end because it's the edge but I'm going to put a mark at eight I'm going to put a mark at four and I'm going to put a mark at zero then I repeat that process on the other end of the page with the 12 splitting the, this end of the page and with a mark at eight a mark at four and a mark at zero it's important that you visually sight this next mark because we're not all the way up to the edge right now. Uh, and just kind of visually make sure that your ruler is parallel because if my ruler is cockeyed like this and I make those same marks, obviously I'm not really going to be parallel. Now that I have those marks made, I can take my ruler and use its straight edge to mark off my grid lines. So you should be able to see that line pretty good. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other two. So you probably notice that I fuss with my ruler a little bit when I do that. And the only reason for it is that you have to make sure that each of those marks that you make, each of the long lines, is equally dividing both of your tick marks. If you're off by a half of a line width or a line width, then you're off by a degree and you're not going to be square. Now that that's done, I can flip my sheet around like this, and again, working from the square corner, I can mark off the next interval, which is going to be four squares long. So in this case, I'm going to line up the zero on my ruler with the corner, and I'm going to make marks at four, eight, twelve, and sixteen inches. I'm going to repeat that process again, this time on my final grid line, splitting the edge with my zero on my ruler, and marking at 4, 8, 12, and 16. And this is just a little bit of practice, or a little bit of experience in practice, that I put those tick marks right on that line. So I know for certain that this right here is parallel with the line that I want it to be, which means when I strike these grid lines, I know that everything is perpendicular. So now I'm just going to strike off my four grid lines. So with any luck, you should be able to see those lines on my page now. And you can see that I have a 3 by 4 grid, which is a total of 12 squares. And we're going to need 6 out of those 12 squares to make a cube, which is 6-sided. So to start the next part of this process, I'm going to look at my lines here, and I'm going to look at my pattern as a demonstration. It fits in my grid just like this. And in order to cut these bevels, I'm going to need guidelines that are exactly one material thickness off the edge, which means if my material is 3 16 of an inch thick, I need that, that guideline to be 3 16 of an inch from the edge. And on an inside corner, that's for outside corners, on an inside corner like this, where this has to fold and it's going to remain attached, I need 3 16 on one side of the line here, and I need 3 16 on the other side of the line up here. So what I'll do next is get out my ruler, again, trusty ruler, and I'm going to set my mark where I want to measure from. In this case, I'm going to use the 1, and I'm going to put a tick mark at 3 16 of an inch. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. This time I'm going to start at the 2, and I'm going to count backwards 3 16 just because it's easier because I'm right-handed. And those two marks are going to be the beginning of my offset lines for my grid. And I'll flip the whole sheet around like this, and do the same thing on this end, marking 3 16 and marking 3 16 
If I strike those lines now, I'll have the beginnings of everything I need to cut this cube pattern. Okay, so now I have marks for the outside edge of the line as well as the inside edge of the line, and I just have to repeat that process everywhere else. So for example, I'll need to repeat that process on the outside edge. You'll notice that as I do this, I move my material around a lot, and that's because the way that I position myself and my ruler is how I generate consistency in my measurements which means that if I need to move something, I'm not going to move my body around, I'm going to move my material around. And it's not just for the camera in this case, it's so that I'm constantly using my ruler and my drawing hand and everything in approximately the same way each and every time. And by doing that, I generate a lot better accuracy than I would if I were constantly kind of torquing my body and trying to get in and change things uh, other than the position of my material. Now in this case, I'm going to mark my inside corner. This is where I'm going to make a V. And when I do this, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this for all of the inside corners, is I'm going to put my major inch mark, in this case I'm, I'm measuring off the two inch mark, but I'm going to put my major inch mark right on the line that I want to offset. And then I'm going to count three backwards, one, two, three. And I'm going to count three forwards, one, two, three. And I have a three sixteenths of an inch mark on the left and a three sixteenths of an inch mark on the right. And I'll repeat that process up here. And now when I mark that offset, I have side by side parallel lines, or side by side by side, I should say. My pen seems to be protesting this material. And then because we're making so many lines on this thing, I'm going to put a CL mark like this on that line that tells me that's a center line. And center lines are always going to be scored, but not cut all the way through. And I'll repeat that process for the next two inside cuts as well. And in this case, because this line goes all the way through, I'll just mark it all the way to both ends of the sheet like this. And again, I'm going to remind myself that that's a center line. And just keep moving down the sheet. So you notice I just changed my tactic a little bit there and I realized that as I'm doing this, because these go all the way through in one case and, and dead end at the edges of our pattern in the other case, I should put these marks a little farther apart so that I know that they're accurate. So now I'm going to mark 3 sixteenths there, and I'm going to mark 3 sixteenths on the other side, but because this one doesn't go all the way through, I just have to mark it from here to here. Okay. And again, I'm going to mark this as a center line, because it's always going to be a center line. Only a few more to go, and our pattern will be marked, and then we'll talk about how to cut it out. So again, I need marks on this edge, 3 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths. I'm going to need a 3 sixteenths inch mark here, like this, for the center of the fold, and here like this. And then I'm going to repeat that down here, and I'll go along and strike off all my lines at once. So this is a center line, and this is a center line, and now we have all of our marks that we need in order to cut this piece out in looks like a little under 12 minutes. So this really doesn't take very long when you have a lot of experience, but if you're new to this, just make sure you take your time and line up each and every mark uh, so that you know everything is parallel and perpendicular.